I love Princeton. 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 Princeton, I love it. I love Princeton. 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 Um, what is one of the biggest things I've learned about the filmmaking process? I would say that, I mean, I'm get, getting this crazy opportunity to work and meet all these really talented young and up and coming filmmakers. Um, I've also noticed that a lot of, I feel like a lot of young filmmakers mistake this idea that a director is at the top of this pyramid and their job is to tell everyone what to do and if you don't listen get out of here that's not what it is it's not ego needs to be checked at the door you know i'm a really strong believer that you know this industry is incredibly co collaborative um it's one of the most beautiful things about filmmaking is that for every step of the way pre-production production post-production post you're working alongside people who are just as, if not more, talented than you. And remembering that at all times is really important, I think. Remembering that, you know, you're not the biggest head in the room. You don't know the most about everything. And there's always going to be someone who has a better idea. Um, so be receptive to that. Re be receptive to that. Be respectful of that. And have the humility to collaborate because I feel like a lot of young and up and coming filmmakers have this idea of it's my way or the highway that's not it and um, that'll cost you down the road if you are a person with that idea in your head so I'm just telling you right now get it out <laughs> because filmmaking is fun we're making movies we're having a good time we're lucky that we get to do this um, and you know it shouldn't be a thing where one person is bigger than everyone else.
swore it was just an animal. No, no, he was slimy and ugly and green. And oh, it's all right. Come here. <laughs> Come on. We'll go have dinner and we can talk about it. Well, what I learned about filmmaking is that it's an ongoing creative process, always. It just, it doesn't stop. The creativity is always, always flowing. And that's something that is a little difficult to get used to, but it's just something you have to get used to. And what I mean by that is you can have a locked script, you can be on set, the director can actually say action, you can film an entire scene, and you might even be done with that scene. And somebody can come in and throw around an idea and the director really likes it. And you find yourself reshooting that entire scene later on in that day or later on in the week, wherever that they can find space for it in the schedule. And so that's something that you just have to be okay with. That every day is very different. Every day can be extremely long and stressful. And it's because... People are always just being creative and they're always thinking of other ways to make things uh, better. And sometimes you learn that something doesn't work when you do shoot it. And unfortunately, that can cost production a lot of money um, and it's, un it's not very good for the budget. But that's the nature of storytelling and the nature of filmmaking. And I was told that. I wasn't, it's not something I wish I had known. I kind of was given, you know, I was told like, this is the nature of the style. So I, for me personally, it was, I, you know, it just always kind of go with the flow. But um, there is something that I wish somebody would have really drilled into my, you know, into my head when I was starting out. And that is how important and vital, um, making friendships and making relationships. It is a very, very, very uh, relationship type of industry. And if you think you might not need a certain, not need to know a certain person, um, it's always best to really make it a point to meet everybody you can and to maintain a relationship with them. And um, that is really how... Um, you can get very far in the industry. So even if you don't have a lot of uh, titles on your resume of things that you've worked on, if you know the right people, you uh, will definitely get on things that, that, that matter. Social distancing, six feet. I couldn't play outside. We couldn't go to restaurants, so we had to eat inside. It was horrible. Oh no, no, no. It shouldn't happen again. Nope. 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 I hope it wouldn't happen again. The coronavirus.
Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, oh, oh, I um, watched this YouTube video when I was waiting for the new next year. And I saw this YouTube video titled, There was a new virus discovered. Um, I never believed the new vi the YouTube video that I saw, but it was real. There was a new virus discovered, the coronavirus. Um, uh, actually, um, I don't really remember. Probably like um February. Uh, I remember when there was an ambulance in front of my apartment, and in a few days there was the first death case in my apartment. I remember when there were um no people in the streets. There were no one in the streets. I remember uh, social distancing, six feet. Feet apart. Um. Oh, I remember uh, that um the playgrounds were closing. We couldn't use the playgrounds. I remember when the schools were closed. It was closed. Oh. Oh, I remember when the face covering was required in indoors. So we need a mask to come in. I remember um doing gym class indoors at my house. That was very fun doing gym. I remember tech issues. <laughs> tech issues. Uh, I remember um Wi-Fi problems and um Wi-Fi issues. Yeah, I couldn't like, join the Zoom because of Wi-Fi issues and stuff. Um. Oh, I guess. I have more time doing things like doing hobbies and stuff, doing things that I wanted. I think um spending more time with my family, more family time. Um, <laughs> um, uh, not nothing, I guess. Oh wait, actually, I think um. Less time in school, yeah, less time in school. It was a hard time for everyone, and I hope it will not happen again. Hello, my name is Chandra Cameron. I'm an actress, singer, director, and teacher. I have professionally performed on Broadway and toward Europe. I have performed regional theater throughout the United States, and I have even performed on cruise lines. I presently teach and have taught from grades pre-K through 12, as well as in the past taught as adjunct faculty in the area of speech communication for several colleges. I have been interested in film and theater since I was a very young child let's say six or seven years old. Black and white movies and artists like Betty Davis and Joan Crawford hooked me in and I loved the horror movie genre for many years. One of the most remarkable scenes from a movie for me, in my opinion, was the entire Forrest Gump movie. The timeless scenes strung together were all so poignant and direct, even though so much of the movie was laced in a type of vague humor. Film and theater are an evolving and ever-changing genre, so I think it is wonderful to watch film and theater morph as time passes. 
I think the most important role that film and theater has in our lives is that it gives a voice to artists. It gives them the ability to express themselves and share stories or narratives that expose their creative genius. They get the opportunity to tell stories from such personal and unique perspectives. It also gives artists a chance to collaborate with others to bring a script to life. I believe film is an amazing platform of storytelling and creative expression. <laughs> Thank you.
Now, finally, I can sleep in a cozy bed. When I first started um, doing films and, and working in filmmaking, I wasn't really clear on sound editing. And so I, I kind of thought that whatever quality you had, if it was poor quality audio, there was just nothing you could do about it. And sure, it's, it's important to have really good audio to start with, but there are actually a lot of tools, especially in Final Cut Pro and other programs, other software, that will help you to clean up the audio. And as I learned recently, with the help of a colleague, you can actually remove the sound of cicadas from, from audio if you've done a film outside. So there's a little tip for you. Um, you can do it in uh, really well in GarageBand. into the ocean and a marine animal like a turtle is bound to see it and think it's food. A poor turtle will swallow it and the plastic ends up getting caught in their stomach so they can't eat their real food and they eventually die of starvation. And that was a single piece of plastic that cost a turtle its life. Imagine if there were thousands more floating in the ocean. Most turtles are endangered. Now we know why. Even if the plastic wasn't swallowed by an animal, it would still be harmful to the sea. Plastic takes a really long time to break down, with bottles taking a whole 450 years to degrade. And in this process, it could lead to harmful chemicals into the sea. But wait, the harm plastic causes isn't over. The broken down plastic, or microplastic, is teeny tiny, which makes it easier for fish and animals to unintentionally swallow it. Now, you may think, hey, all of this is about the animals. What about us humans? Why should we care? Well, because we humans eat the fish that eats the microplastic. Even the very water we use and drink contains microplastics. Studies show that 83% of metropolitan tap water contains plastic pollutants, and pretty much no water processing system can filter that out. It's even in bottled water. In a study, 11 of the world's largest bottled water brands were tested for microplastics. The results were horrifying. 93% of the water contained microplastics. And we're drinking this stuff? We as human beings living on this planet need to change and do better. All too often people think, eh, one little candy wrapper on the ground won't hurt. But in reality, it does. To quote record-breaking sailor Ellen MacArthur, there could be more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050 if people kept on continuing the cycle of litter. Do the four R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and rethink. 
Here are some simple ways to do that. First, you can use a reusable water bottle. They come in lots of fun colors and patterns that are way cooler than a plain old plastic water bottle. Plus, a lot of them have good insulation that can keep your cold drinks cold and your hot drinks hot. A way to reuse and recycle. You can upcycle. A milk carton can become a planter. A jam jar can become a pencil holder. A carter box could become a storage bin. The possibilities are endless. Furthermore, to help prevent shorebirds and turtles from being tangled in trash, cut the loops on things like soda can packaging rings and mask scraps before you throw them away, and make sure to put them in the garbage can, of course. Lastly, rethink. Be more aware of how much plastic you're using and how that could affect marine life if it ended up in the ocean. about plastic pollution and how to spread the word. Together you can organize a beach cleanup or even start an ocean pollution awareness association. I believe that if we created this problem together, we can fix it together. The future is in our hands. It all starts with one person. important role in your opinion that film plays in life that's uh, I mean you can answer that question in so many different ways <laughs> but um, in my opinion good filmmaking and good storytelling is really at the end of the day about escapism creating a world creating a story a narrative whether that's in documentary format whether that's in television or movies, creating a space where you can transport an audience member completely out of reality. If you can do that even for a couple of minutes, you've done a good job. And, you know, whether you're that little kid um, sitting in the theater watching the Avengers for the first time um, on the screen, seeing superheroes in live action, like, that's crazy. Or you're coming home from a crazy day at work where your boss was yelling at you and you're exhausted and all you want to do is turn on the television and watch the Food Network. You're escaping into stories, into you know information, into education, into other things. You're escaping into this world that has been created by creators, by filmmakers. And I feel like that is a pretty important important role in life. It's a pretty big responsibility. Everything is fine. I was just a little bit... Mom.
That thing is due in two weeks. Stop worrying about me. I have all my assignments under control. Fine, Mom. I love you too, Mom. What the? Who are you? Why are you following me? Melina, it's just me, Art. Mom didn't say anything about you being invisible. How the hell was I supposed to know? Okay, I'm sorry, Melina, but there's a problem I have right now that I haven't solved yet. I need to be invisible for now. Art, are you saying that you got in trouble again? What's it this time, huh? Oh, um, okay. To give you the short version, I didn't pay the rent I was supposed to, and now I have a big, creepy, angry guy that wants to kill me. Seriously? What's the long version? Actually, there is no long version. Uh, that's kind of it. I should have never trusted the guy in the first place. Okay, well, it sounds like you need some help. Say, now that I think about it, was that big, tall guy standing next to the school the person you're talking about? Yep. I don't know how I could be so stupid as to rent an apartment from a strange creature. Look, Art, that's in the past and you can't change it now. Look, just tell me how I can help you, okay? Here. Now I can see you while you tell me what the plan is. Got it, Melina. This guy still has a gun, so be careful. Melina, I think you need to magnetize the gun off of him. That should be the only way to... Well, speak of the devil, Melina. You're too good. Thanks, Sart. All we have to do now is put the nail in the coffin. I'm on it. Uh, We have a problem, Melina. Yeah, right. Like, I didn't see already. Art, get on the roof, quick! I'm on the roof! Drop the axe, now! Perfect day, Miha. What is the most important role in your opinion that film plays in life? Um, I think film has become somewhat of an extension of our lives. I think that many of us turn to film for all different kinds of reasons. Um, 
I mean, it's such an it's such a versatile tool. You have film for education. You have film for entertainment. There's film for self expression. Uh, there's experimental film. Um, there's film to show music music videos. There's so many different uh, facets in how we can be creative and how we can incorporate film and and be and be filmmakers is is, is so vast and i think that's what's so special is that um the role that it plays is it just it gives you freedom if you want to be as expressive as you want about anything that's on your mind um in the most simplest terms if you have something to say and you want to share it you can and I think that's what film, that's such an important role that film plays is it just is the opportunity to do that because it is that type of medium. And um, so I think that's probably the most important role. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it just, you, if you have a story to tell you, it, you have everything you need at your fingertips. You know, you have a smartphone, it has video on it, and you can go and you can tell your story. It's a friend Phil. Today, experts predict that this is the last day for cicadas as they will cease in the next 24 hours and storms roll in where local legend has it as paranormal powers beyond comprehension. Isn't that something? What the heck have you been doing? You were supposed to be studying cicadas for the entire class month. I know, I know. I'm sorry, okay? Look, you have at least one field day of studying. You got that? Doesn't really seem like the best weather. There's gonna be a storm. I don't care if there's a little rain. I want the paper on my desk tomorrow morning, or someone new will replace you. You got to that? Wait, wait, mister. You don't need to re replace me. Uh, Sorry, the number uh, of the is on. not in service at this time. Stretch. Come on, stretch. Stretch. Uh, wait, is that a big shoe? Wait a minute. What's that? Wait, is that my body? Wait a minute. What's going on here? Ah! Oh my gosh, this can't be happening. I'm stuck in a cicada's body. Oh my god. Wait, what? What's going on? If I'm in this body, does that mean the cicada in here is in my body? No, 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 oh, come on. Get back here, what are you doing? No, come on, come back. Hey, that's my pen. It's 
Stop it. Come on. No. Quit it out. No. Ah. Ah. What are you doing? Don't touch it. That's my data. No. No. What? No. My data. It'll be lost in the rain. Oh, God. I gotta get it before the storm gets worse. As I see it, the significance of film is that it um, it connects us, it it communicates and articulates human experience across cultures, and um, it 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 has the ability, if we if we let it, to unite us. Um, novels and and books have that ability as well. It's just um, you know, for better or worse, more folks are probably going to sit down in front of a screen and watch a good film um, and discuss it and learn something from it than um, those who will sit with a book. Not to say that people don't read, but um, I think a film is, um, it, it's pretty immediate. It's, it's a popular media, it's a popular medium. Um, and I think for those reasons, it's, it's a especially, especially good tool for building bridges between communities and um, giving us an experience of what life is like for others.
We never talk anymore. Mom, I have to get to class. Come on, you have five minutes. So have things been going? Fine. Well, is it fine or is it actually fine? It's fine. Don't worry. Dad will get a new job soon. I'm not worried. And you said that two months ago. Well, now you definitely seem worried. Don't say it like that. You know he's doing his best for us. The only thing he's done for us is break the bathroom door. What? He gets drunk and he beats the shit out of you. But it's for us, right? Don't say that. He did no such thing. And don't repeat that at school. We just gotta get through this as a family. Forget about what Dad did when he was a little tipsy and move forward. Can I go now? Have a good day at school. I'll try. Why aren't you in bed? I... Honey... You know I love you, right? I raised a son like you. When I was a kid, if I didn't call my father sir, I wouldn't get to eat dinner. You don't have any respect for anyone. That's why she left. I worked my ass off trying to find a job. And you can't show her any goddamn love or respect. Lie to her? Tell her I'm a bad man? I do everything for you! I'm sorry. You're what? I'm sorry. You're sorry? You're sorry? Well, that just fixes everything, doesn't it? Hey there. Sean Palmer, right? Yeah. They, uh, transferred me down here. Apparently they're gonna use my office for something, uh, more important. Pull up a chair. So, what brings you down here? 
I need a new way to get to school. Why? What's your confidentiality agreement? You can tell me anything. Everything that goes on in this room stays in this room. It's completely confidential. So I can tell you anything. And you won't tell anyone? Unless you or someone you know is in danger. Um, are you not on the bus route? I'm just outside of it. Oh, okay. Uh, your parents can't drive you to school? They got promotions. A lot of work. They collectively got one promotion? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not buying it. Look, I'm here to support you in any way that I can. That doesn't just mean finding a way for you to get to school on time. That also means to support you emotionally. My mom's on vacation, and my dad's a bit lazy. And I've been trying to get him to change, but it's not working. Tell me more. You know my therapist. Well, I did get a degree in psychology. So. Isn't Red Ridge a community college? I don't see what that has to do with anything. I'll bark in a bachelor's degree in psychology really get Okay, look, let's get back to what is really important. Now, you can't change other people. You can only change yourself and how you react to uh, situations. But if they're the problem, why do I have to change? Look, kid, I don't know. This is just what they tell me to say. So I'll see if I can find another parent or a teacher that can pick you up on their way to school. I thought you were supposed to support me emotionally. Well, I'm not your therapist, right? And there's the bell. What the hell, man? Calm down, Jesus. Shut up! What did you just say? I said shut up! Shut the f up! I am so done putting up with this! You got fired three months ago! When are you gonna get a new f job? And mom didn't leave you because of me. She left because you're a cat, dip, horrible f husband! Apologize right now. I'm not gonna- APOLOGIZE RIGHT F***ING NOW! Or what?
judges have the difficult task of reviewing the films submitted and selecting the ones to award. Thanks to all our middle school and high school filmmakers for your hard work and creativity. The awards for the Princeton Unified Middle School Films. An official selection for humor goes to the Coronavirus Interview by Edward Cole. An official selection for narration goes to Look at the Blanket by Michael Cole. Third prize goes to Diversity in Princeton Through Food by Kayuki Zhao. Second prize goes to Pandemic Plastic by Stephanie Liao. And first prize goes to The Walk by Lily Von Romer. Thomas Kisby. Second prize goes to The Tenant by Finn Munaya and Toda Sofuristic. First prize goes to Oleander by Finn Munaya and Toda Sofuristic and Adrian Orban. Thank you to our talented filmmakers and our dedicated judges. We will contact all the filmmakers to deliver your prizes and certificates in the next three days. <laughs> 